so far on this trip, we have entered parks after they've already opened, or even headed to parks after they've already opened. So we're experiencing the pre-park opening now, going to Magic Kingdom. And we saw the line for the buses, the first set of buses, and decided we would take a lift in. So here we are waiting in line at the Ticket and Transportation Center. Apparently the lifts just take you here, not directly to Magic Kingdom, which makes sense. Otherwise everyone would take a lift and it would probably be super crowded. We're just waiting outside the temperature check. They haven't started letting people in yet as far as we can see, but we're not too far back. So we should be in pretty quick once they start the temperature screenings. I'll let you know. Come join us today. There's the temperature screening I was mentioning. This is the number of people in front of us. Shouldn't take too long. You just walk up and they use one of those temperature guns on you and they tell you if you're good. I haven't seen anybody who's not, so I don't know what the procedures are. And then after that, you move to the security check-in. We had the choice between the monorail and the ferry. We decided to go with the monorail. As much as I like boats, ferries are just slower. Monorails are faster. It is a scientific fact. We'll just have to go with that. Might not get this one though. Oh, I guess we are. Uh, here we are at the tap style. So normally you tap and then put your finger, but they're not making you put your finger right now. So everyone's just tapping. She looks like she's got stuff going on. Hello. Come on. Oh, wrong thing. Thank you. <laughs> I always try to use my app, my iWatch or Apple Watch. There's the Mickey flower. Nobody's out here taking pictures though. Did good time for that. All right, coming in the tunnels under the railroad, and they did a paint job on the castle. I've been seeing videos of it. I'm really looking forward to seeing it in person. It's kind of a, it's a dark, sort of a blue darker blue. Um, still kind of pinkish, but I think the towers pop a lot more than they used to. And there's the... Uh, there's the announcement. It seems to go about every 10 or 20 minutes. I haven't timed it, but... Anecdotally, it seems like it. All right, coming around the corner to see the castle. Oh, look at that, it just really pops, right? Yeah, I feel like the right side of the sun hitting it's almost violent. Or if we were guessing or something. Yeah, definitely a different color of top. Still sort of bluish, but more of a bluish purple color. Dare I say indigo. <laughs> Not quite indigo. Be more purplish, I think. It is 8.40 right now. Park opens at 9. We haven't actually decided what we're going to go for, except maybe a Starbucks first. <laughs> maybe get a little bit of breakfast there, too. All right, we're going to do that. Yay. Good choice. Oh man, this early in the morning, this place would be out the door on a normal day. And here we are, close up to the front of the line. It's just incredible how few people there are, even in the beginning when normally there would be tons and tons. We stopped by the Starbucks, got a couple of iced teas to get some caffeine and get rehydrated and some food. And we're being assaulted by ducks right now. One of them's over here like nipping at me, not painfully, but trying to get my attention. Like, stop it, duck. And that one's very loud. So anyway, I mean, I love ducks, but you're not supposed to feed the animals here. And this is one of the reasons is because then they will crowd around people all the time. And there's an ibis there too. It's like some sort of duck gang. And they look like girls, so it's a duck girl gang just after nine and well I think the park has been open because people have just been going into it so there wasn't a big rope drop ceremony like there usually is we decided on a plan we're gonna start on the big we're gonna start on the big thunder railroad side over there and 
Frontierland and just work our way forward. Or I shouldn't say forward, sideways through the park. Across the park. Just as good of a plan as anyway. Normally we wouldn't do anything like that on a normal day. <laughs> we'd probably also be like the birds but, in the park. Now. Yeah, but on a normal day, we're always going back and forth and back and forth. But because the rides will be much less busy. And one of the reasons, it's not just the lack of people that is a significant contributor, of course, but they don't have fast passes going right now. So normally, either 30 days or 60 days, depending on whether you're staying on property, before you come here, you can choose three fast passes at a park. Once you use those up, you can make more. And because there's this alternate line that gets loaded in, standby lines are longer. But now that everybody's in a standby line and there are no alternate lines, then the standby lines go faster. So not only are there less people, but there's only one line feeding each ride. And that has been making a lot of difference. Absolutely. So. My favorite things isn't open right now. That is the cheeseburger egg roll cart. They were going into Adventureland. It's right at the entrance. Cheeseburger egg roll cart. They also usually have another kind. I think this time it's pepperoni or it was recently. And oh man, I'm so sad because the cheeseburger egg roll is so good. It's one of my favorite snacks here. One of my other favorite snacks here is at the Sunshine, Sunshine Tree Terrace where they have a vanilla orange swirl. That does not look closed though. I mean, it's not open right now, but what I mean is, is that it doesn't look like it's closed, closed. That might be open later. If so, we're gonna take a look. This is where our lunch is going to be today. The Skipper Canteen. We came to the Skipper Canteen, well, a couple of times, but we've been to the Skipper Canteen in February with our friend Wes, and I had some noodles that were amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I wanna get them again. They were, Josh couldn't have them because he doesn't like too, things who are, that are too spicy. And I agree, these were spicy, these absolutely were spicy. spicy. I loved them, but Josh could only have these a few were bites. Like an eight out of 10. And he had to just have the appetizer <laughs> instead, oh which ended up being okay. So let's see. Well, maybe we won't start with Big Thunder Mountain. Maybe we'll start with the Jungle Cruise. We haven't decided yet. I'll let you know. We decided on the Jungle Cruise. Here's what the queue looks like right now. It's a five minute wait to get on. And that's just because they're not loading the bolts fully. I think there's like three groups and they're all separated from each other on the boats. Or can use of a handbook abandoned. Boy, this is strange, I tell you. Usually the natives are used to some kind of big walk and party, but I can't see anyone. Can you? Something must have scared them off. <laughs> oh, no. This might explain it right here. Up on the left, we have a giant python. They grow to be about 24 feet long, but don't worry folks, they're really friendly creatures. They can even develop a crush on you. But believe me, you don't want to get wrapped up in that. It's a really constricting relationship. You will notice this is a home to a huge array of wildlife, including, let's see, what do we have here? Giraffes, wildebeests, gazelles, vultures. Why don't you look at this up on the right? We have a nice pack of lions protecting a, a sleeping zebra. What a shark. Oh boy. There's the first plane they ever flew. Tried to fly it to Casablanca. Seems like every time they get behind the wheel something for the first time, something terrible happens. By the way, did I mention this is my first time piloting a boat? We're now entering a hippo pool. That'll be cool, ladies and gentlemen. These hungry hippos look like really friendly creatures, but they can capsize an entire boat just like this one. So I think we need to scare them off. You see, it's the... It's the ones up in the trees you really need to watch out for. <laughs> You probably can't tell this from the music, which sounds a lot more like Celtic river dancey, but we're in Pirates of the Caribbean, and it says it's a 20 minute wait. It's um, 9.35 right now, so we'll see how long it actually takes. 
probably take about that long just to walk through. It's like another one of those sort of quickly loading, but they can only put so many people in a boat instead of filling it up. But the line's been fairly consistently moving. We'll see if that keeps up. This music sounds a lot more piratey. I think it's yo-ho, yo-ho, pirate's life for me. As you walk through the queue, essentially you're walking through a Spanish fort. So there's a lot of things to look at, interact with. Here's a big cask, or, ca or a cask actually, and barrels and stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, at least it's nice. It's in air conditioning. There's visual things to look at. I know we're not touching anything right now though. Looks like they're loading fronts and backs. It's now 9.45, so it definitely wasn't 20 minutes. And the line did fairly constantly move. I'm not sure what those other groups are that are boarding though, since there aren't any fast passes. It's strange. I think we figured it out since normally you have fast pass line coming that way and the regular line coming this way and there are different boarding docks for both. Uh, there's a point over there where they either send you to the left or right. So these are all main line people, but you could go to the left or right for the front or back boat. In Magic Kingdom, one of the relaxation stations is over here next to Pirates, where you can come take your mask off, hang out for a little while. This one's all in the sun, but later in the day, I think it would be better. They don't really have any shade in there right now. It's right next to the Golden Oak Outpost, which is not open right now. Our next ride is the wildest ride in the wilderness, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. I like roller coasters. Looking forward to doing this one. I get the drinking and the fighting. I don't get the whistling. What is it about whistling that caused somebody to have to have this sign put up? Ladies and gentlemen, there will be a brief delay as your passengers are forfeiting tickets for each of our ride vehicles. We resume operations in just a few moments. We apologize for the inconvenience and we thank you for your patience and understanding. Oh, that's cool. They just told us that. It'll be a brief delay. No, you can hear it. So they clean the ride vehicles every one or two hours. I think it's one, maybe two. Anyway, one of those. And uh, so sometimes the rides might be a little bit longer as they clean those vehicles, but hey, I'm all for them cleaning the vehicles. Normally in this queue, you have things you can touch and play with. Uh, further back in the queue, there were dynamite plungers that you could push and it would do a little explosion somewhere out in the site. And these had little like turn things where you could turn them and make these uh, pictures kind of move. Well, of course, they don't want people touching. And there's a train coming. You can see how the social distancing is going. It's, I think like one group per car. So if your group has enough people to fill up a car, then it'll be full. Otherwise, yeah, you can see. Interesting. That's kind of what I figured they do. Yeah, more areas where they used to have cranks, but don't right now. They're only loading one side down. Typically, you can go down both sides, and they load on uh, both sides of the track. There's a track to the left and a track to the right. Looks like they're only doing the one on the right, right? Correct. Or the one on the right currently and everybody goes down that way. But they do have 
physical barriers there in case they feel like they need to open both sides. I'll tell you though, in these areas where it's normally tight to begin with and up to your waist, having these walls here make it feel positively claustrophobic because you are just really walled in. And there's where the loading area is. It's 10.30 in the morning in Frontierland. I wanted to give you an idea of what the crowd level looked like here. I know I've mentioned this before plenty of times, but if this was a normal uh, July, Saturday morning, this would be wall-to-wall -wall people, absolutely packed. And here we have very few people, very easy to maintain social distancing. It's just incredible. I know they're only letting a certain number of people in the parks and they kept adding more and more slots because I don't think they were all being taken. So whatever that limit is, Disney has never said, but whatever that limit is, it wasn't being reached. So it's even less than whatever they were putting out as their limit. I suspect, again, we don't know for sure because Disney doesn't release that kind of information. In any case, good for us. We're coming up on uh, I always want to say New Orleans Square because I'm so used to Disneyland, but it's uh, Liberty Square. And we're coming around to the Haunted Mansion. That's what we want to go do next. Everything so far has been, I'm not going to say a walk-on, but the line is, has been continuously moving. And the nice thing about the Haunted Mansion is that it does continuously load. It's the Omni Mover system where the, the cars just keep going and going and going. Unless they have to stop it for some reason, like somebody transferring from a, from a wheelchair. But otherwise, it just goes and goes and goes. So it's a people eater. It accepts a lot of guests in an hour. All right, Honda Mansion. I can't tell what that says from here. Does that say 10? 30? Oh, it's 10. It's kind of in shadow, actually, you know, because my sunglasses is on and they're polarized and, yep, 10 minutes. So, essentially, we just have to walk through the queue to get there along with these people. No stopping in the stretch. Yes. Josh was mentioning that uh, there's not a pre-show anymore, so there, everyone doesn't stop in the stretching room and watch the portrait stretch like you usually do. It's you just walk on to the cars. Here I will miss that. There are some rides where I wouldn't miss the pre-show, but here I will miss that because I find that part awesome. But you know, it's a small price to pay to still be able to ride the ride. We don't often go through the standby queue because we usually do fast passes, so it's nice to look at some of the decorations. These are the busts of the family members who have died over the years. Trust me, they're all dead. And normally you go through this area here and you can touch those instruments on there and they'll play noises or like make noises that sound like those instruments. And the captain's, uh, uh, well, what is that, grave, mausoleum, actually much more of a crypt, will spray water at you um, and kind of drip down the sides because you see it's cracked there. But none of those are turned on because essentially we're just walking through. But yeah, did you see how quickly we just walked through most of that? And then the way to get into it is just right around this corner. The entrance is right over there. So even though it said 10 minutes, it's probably been about five. I didn't time it, but we're just moving through pretty quickly. Haunted Mansion. 
Now, as they say, look alive, and we'll continue our little tour. Normally they collect people in this room, and then eventually one of these doors will open, either the one we're going into or the one over there, so they can have sort of two groups going at the same time. And then the portraits are all in their stretched out states. Otherwise you'd be in here for the pre-show. But instead, we're just, actually you can see that, but we're walking on the, or standing on the paths. And now we're moving forward. Also, instead of forcing you to double back, we'll go down there and come down here. You're just walking straight into here and getting on a car, the Doom Buggy. This is called the Endless Hallway, which is not endless, it's just tricks with mirrors. Man trapped in coffin. Delightful chandeliers. I'm not sure if you can see this. You're going by a series of doors where it sounds like people are beating on them, and this one here is sort of breathing in and out. And then you come to a clock with 13 at the top. And now... Madame Leota. I always want to say somewhere beyond, but it's regions beyond, which is better. Wherever you dwell. Give us a hint by ringing the bell. Serpents and spiders, tail of a rat. The happy ones have received your sympathetic vibrations. And then you move into a ballroom where ghosts are celebrating a birthday party. Then you come into the attic where the bride, who is the person that has married a number of times, every time you see her, she has another pearl necklace every time she gets married. And I can't tell if you can tell, but the guy's heads are disappearing in these different pictures. But And in the end, she has five pearl necklaces right there in that image. And you move away from what would be the scary parts into a more fun part. It's funny because at the entrance to this, there's a dog who looks like he's scared, and we'll see him later too. But the owls up there, and the kitties right here, they seem perfectly at home amongst the ghosts and the ghoulies. But, yeah. I always like these singing busts. So these are the three hitchhiking ghosts, and I remember all their names now. It's Phineas, Ezra, and Gus. I never remember Gus, but I remembered it this time. The next ride we're getting on is Peter Pan. If you can't tell from the areas behind me, there's Nana. A lot of the queue was outside, just kind of doubled back. And then now we're in the inside part that's air conditioned. They said it was gonna be anywhere from between 25 and 30, and only 30 because they were gonna be stopping the ride and doing the sanitation, which takes about five minutes, which I guess has passed because uh, there was a moment where we stopped and we were outside, thankfully in the shade, and then all of a sudden, we started moving again. This is another continuously loading. Um, it does stop for a moment for you to get on, but then it goes pretty quickly again. So I guess it's not continuously loading, but it's pretty quick loading. One interesting thing about some of where you have to stand, like there is no barrier here, even though you wouldn't necessarily be six feet apart, but if you stand here, and they stand there, and somebody stands over there, then you're staggered next to each other so that you're never actually next to anybody. There's usually a, well, somewhat interactive element here where Tinkerbell flies around. And over here, there's some shadow stuff that you can play with on the wall, but it doesn't look like any of that's going, so. Well, nobody's staying here long enough to see it all, so that makes sense. 
One thing I like about this area is so the front of the boat, you've got one scene going on here where Wendy is about to walk the plank and then you see uh, Captain Hook and Peter Pan fighting up there. And then you have the conclusion, all the pirates are beat up and they're flying the boat and everybody's happy. And all the 13 year olds are happy and living happily ever after. Actually, I think they're probably like 10. And then off to Never Never Land. Our next ride is gonna be Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. And normally there's a meet and greet over there with uh, Pooh characters, but they're not doing meet and greets now. So they actually have the line winding through that area. So we're out here and the entrance is up there on the left. And it's only 15 minutes, but since we're, you know, all the lines are always spread out. So it looks longer than it is, but these lines have not been taking very long at all. The line for Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is across from us over there. And that ride is normally in the two hour, two plus hour wait times. Right now it's 45 minutes. And probably not even that. These lines have been going faster than they've been telling. During the non-pandemic times, this area here is a place where kids can kind of play while they wait in line. Right now, none of it's available and it's all roped off because otherwise, I mean, I'm sure even on a good day, it's gross with kid germs, uh, but now it's uh, much worse. In which we join Pooh and his friends in a very blustery day. Yeah. <laughs> if you ask me, you'll never reach that dream. Why me? Why me? Oh dear. There is Owl handing off the deed to Mr. from Mr. Code. Or Mr. Toad handing off the deed to Owl. Because this is where Mr. Toad used to be. Tigger. Yay, Tigger! And we're bouncing. It's very trippy in this room. I like the rain room, even though there's not any real water. It's cooler in here, it has water effects. I'd love to sleep in this room. Big poo butt. Yay. I like the Winnie the Pooh ride. I mean, let's face it, it's not gonna knock your socks off. It's not a thrill ride by any means, but it is a very classic Disney dark ride. Where you're on a vehicle, you go through a story. This one's particularly well done because of some of the special effects they use. So, I, we enjoy it. It's uh, one of our favorite rides here because it's so mellow. We like thrill rides, but we like mellow rides too. Here's a closer look at the colors on the castle. I uh, really like, I was mentioning to Josh how much I like the gold. And Josh was saying, yeah, for the 50th anniversary, you've got gold accents. And that just really makes those towers pop. And then down below that gray, um, I saw some early vlogs once they reopened that there were numbers sort of painted on each of those for which color is supposed to go there, which is kind of cool. So it ended up being color by numbers uh, once they had the paint, it gives it sort of that model look. In any case, I think it's gorgeous. It's, it really is a, a nice coloring of the castle. Here is the hub during this time. And look at all these areas where there are no people. Of course, it's busy right in front of the castle. And you can walk up and go into that main entrance, which usually you can't because there are castle shows up there. And that's sort of a backstage area. So you can't get up there, but here's the hub and it is not crowded at all. A lot of people taking pictures for obvious reasons because you can get, you know, very few pictures can you get of you in the castle with nobody in them or very few people in them. And this is one of those times where you can do that. We're heading this way back to Adventureland for our lunch reservation at Skipper Canteen. 
we're just sort of moseying that way. We have about 10 minutes to get there. So we're just moving slow. One of the awesome things about it being slow is that Josh and I are usually go, go, go kind of people. Like we just not run, but practically run through the park from one place to another so that we can get everything in. But in this circumstance, we feel like we can get everything done and still just move at a reasonable, slow, steady pace. We've also found that stopping and eating because you can't walk and eat has been really nice <laughs> as far as uh, our level of tiredness because if we stop and get a snack, we have to sit down and eat it as opposed to us getting a snack and then walking around with it like we would normally do. And we found those little stops have made a huge difference in the last couple of days on how tired we are while we're at the park. Of course, you know, you're tired and exhausted by the time you get home. You've just been out in the sun all day, but it has been so much better with those little rests. So I think it's probably changed the way we do theme parks in the future. I, hope it I really hope it does. We're gonna try to hold on to this lesson and stop and sit down and take breaks and have our snacks rather than just eating them on the go. Here's the inside of the Skipper Canteen. There are other rooms as well, but I wonder if they're just putting everybody in the main room here and of course social distancing us. Like it's every other seat, you can see these signs on these tables that they're not in use. And it's not full in here and we're well distanced. The theme behind the Skipper's Canteen is it's sort of an extension on the Jungle Cruise where there are puns and uh, mostly just puns, honestly. With some bad jokes. Too. And bad jokes. Our food has arrived. I got the Thai Perkins, or the Perkins Thai noodles, which comes in a chili sauce and it is spicy. Last time we had this, I had to eat most of it because Josh, it was too spicy for Josh to eat, but I like spicy things and this is perfect and it's great again today. This time Josh got the taste like chicken because it is. It's like a, a sweet and spicy Thai sauce. Okay. That's how I would describe it. So it comes like a sweet and spicy okay, tie. Good. Yeah, everything looks great. And so it's a piece of fried chicken and some rice and then a little bit of a sauce over there, which is kind of a uh, chili kind of, did you say Thai? That's like a spicy Thai, sweet spicy Thai. Okay. Sweet spicy good. Thai. Anyway, mine's been, I had just a bite of mine and it was good. And his looks pretty good too. We are done with the uh, Jungle Skipper's Canteen. Is that what it's called? <laughs> Skipper's Canteen? Yeah, Skipper's Canteen. Um, <laughs> All together, our food was 51 bucks, and that is with the annual pass holder discount of 10%. And tax. Yeah, along with tax, so it was about 51 bucks. Okay. All together. We got two entrees. Yep. Josh got the Taste Like Chicken, like you saw, and I got the uh, Perkins Thai noodles, and uh, we got a soda and then water. And that's pretty standard for yeah. Disney sit down. I mean, it can be more expensive, but about, you know, 20 something dollars an entree. It's pretty standard. We very often split things so that because normally there's there's enough in there for uh, both of us. And we could have split probably either of those, but because we wanted different things, we uh, decided to get, you know, full meals. We don't do it very often, but we'll sometimes it's nice. And we'll probably split dinner tonight. <laughs> so, Anyway, we want to go to the Christmas shop. Because the one in Hollywood Studios was not open. We like to buy a ornament every year. Oh, somebody's got to be coming by. The music just picked up. I'm sure you just heard that. Sure enough, we have some dancers. So they're not doing full parades, but they are doing, I think what they're calling cavalcades, where like a single float will go by. So people aren't encouraged to sit, you know, for long periods near other people, but you can stop, stay social distance and watch a float go by. So this one, oh, has Max in it from a, a Goofy movie in the, the Goof Troop. As Clarabelle. Oh man, I love Clarabelle. You don't see her very often. And of course, Goofy there on the top.
do it on stilts. And since there's not that many people, they'll really interact with us. Excuse me up there. Oh my gosh. It's a uh, Benchito Pistoles. Oh, and Benchito! Benchito! Jose! Jose yeah. Carioca. That's wonderful. Followed by some more dancers. And that's it. It's a little thing and it's just gonna go the parade route so people can just stop somewhere along the way. I think it's neat. A little bit of Disney magic. You don't have the fireworks or the parades or some of the shows, but you still get a little bit of Disney magic and I like that. I know it's not Christmas time. I mean, it may be Christmas time when you're watching this, but it's not when I'm filming this but they do have a Christmas shop that's open all year round that sells ornaments. Because you know, maybe this would be your only trip for the whole year and you wanna buy an ornament. We always buy an ornament every year, but we typically have multiple opportunities to get an ornament. But if we find one, we usually will get it. Ooh, I like that Madame Leota. That's pretty cool. Oh, Josh is selling one of the rainbow ornaments. Yeah, I saw this over here. They have these uh, ceramic ones. They have all these different patterns on them. Oh, this is the mad hat. I mean, the, uh, the puzzle. Oh, yeah, that's like that puzzle that we got the other day. Oh, I really like that one. Yeah, I like these ceramic ones a lot. We always have to worry about these because our cat likes to... Well, he hasn't in a while, but he used to like to attack the Christmas tree. So we worry about things that are like ceramic or glass. But I think this would hold up falling to the carpet. Nah, I definitely like that better. entrance looking out towards Main Street. This is, like I was mentioning earlier in the video, usually this is closed because there's a stage there and this is backstage area. But since they're not doing any castle shows, so you can actually get a shot, a reverse shot, looking down Main Street as opposed to up at the castle where most people have. And here is more close up of the castle paint job. The different colored bricks, the gold. There are mosaics in the castle entrance here. So here's the entrance, exit, or vice versa, which, on which way you're going. These are all individual tiles that tell the story of Cinderella. So this is the part of the story where she's running away and she's losing her shoe. Like you can see there, just love the beautiful textures and colors that they use. And then you move on to when the prince is putting it on her foot, or actually the, not, is it the prince that does that? I think it is. Yep, that's the prince. And that's his helper, dude. And you can see as I get closer, these are just individual pieces of tile that make up. Oh, there's the cat, Lucifer. I didn't see him at first. And the 
design of this, the, the artistry of this is amazing. Somebody with such patience and care putting in all these individual tile to make something gorgeous. I couldn't have the patience, but I appreciate the artistry. Here's an example of how they're doing meet and greets now. Rather than going up and standing next to Gaston, he'll stand off in the distance where you can't get to him and you can stand in front of him and take a selfie or pictures or video like I am. It's really the first one of these we've come across. Even though I knew they were doing this, Gaston usually is over there near the Gaston's Tavern. But now he is just hanging out over here near Bell's Enchanted Tales or Enchanted Tales of Bell. <laughs> now he's leaving. I'm sure he'll be out soon enough. I did not know this from other vlogs I've watched, but apparently Gaston's Tavern is closed right now. Village Gift is also closed, which is right next to Gaston's. That didn't surprise me, but Gaston's Tavern being closed did actually surprise me. That's over here near the Little Mermaid ride, where we are heading now. Get a little bit of air conditioning. Having said that, it's honestly not too bad today. It's 90 degrees. There's a good breeze going. The sky is getting more cloudy, so the sun goes behind clouds more continuously. And so it hasn't been that oppressive. I feel like it's gonna storm at some point though. But it hasn't yet, but we're always expecting it. Here is the line for Little Mermaid. Of course, with the social distancing markers, every line looks longer, but even on a busy day, this ride is not usually that long of a line. It's another one they use the Omni Mover system the way that the Haunted Mansion does. So it is continuously loading. You get on as it's moving. So it just eats up people throughout the day. This is about where we were when we had to go back over to Adventureland to get food. So now we are back on track, working our way across the park. There's a little animatronic scuttle in the line here. Yep, not too bad. We pretty much just kept walking through the line until we get here. Sometimes it's interesting, it's like being in a wedding because you like walk, walk, stand. Walk, walk, stand. And here's the uh, Omni Mover. Continuous loading. Ariel, you know Ariel, the mermaid? Ah, what a voice. What a beautiful voice. What? Let me tell you of the evil secret trick, Ariel. ridden every ride here. We don't usually ride these kinds of rides and normally the time on it is way too long for us to care. Plus I'm a kind of a big guy like tall and uh, I don't fit in these things very well so I'm sure it'll suck the whole time but I'm still gonna enjoy it. There's Josh in the car ahead of me number 21. I think I'm number two. are actually 
actually a lot easier to fit into than the ones at Disneyland. I actually feel fairly comfortable here, not like I'm gonna cramp up at any moment. Somebody needs to put the pedal to the metal now. I keep having to stop. You can see on the ground in front of me that even if a kid was driving this, that you can only go so far off the uh, guide here. Ooh, my wheels are going all over the place. They're not really following what I'm turning doing. All right, picking up some speed. Finally. And, all right, pedal to the metal. This is as fast as I'm going. I don't know how fast it is, but it's not that fast. Story time. When I was a kid, we visited some uh, friends uh, or family in Salt Lake City. And... Whoops, had to stop all of a sudden. And there is a place there called Lagoon, which was a, you know, local theme park, amusement park. And they had a car ride like this. And like I said, I was a kid and I'd never, oops, sunglasses. And of course I'd never driven before and I just thought it was the coolest thing. So even though as an adult, I don't typically ride these rides because I can go drive on the highway. As a kid, I can see why they would love it so much. I'm working on the Tron ride. This is where they are in the construction process. It's a it's a roller coaster that goes both in and out and you ride it sort of like a motorcycle. And of course there's Space Mountain. We're still kind of going in a clump. I think whoever's in front of us won't hit the pedal all the way down. That's okay, I think it's a little kid. Yep, it's a little dude up there. And everyone's right on his butt. <laughs> So it's like normal highway driving, right? So when you drive these, there's only one pedal. You push down to go forward, you let up, and that's the brake. So it won't go unless you're actually pushing the pedal forward. And then they will tell us what position to park our car in for the next person to get on the car. We did it, yay! After riding Autopio, now have ridden every single ride in Magic Kingdom. Yes. Over time, not today. No, not today. Although I think we could accomplish that we if we wanted could to. If we really set our minds. If we really to set it. our minds to it. I bet we could do that. But um, that was the last one. The, the holdout before that was the Astral Orbiter. Right. Because you know it's just a spinner ride. But we did it. We can now say that we've conquered all the rides at Magic Kingdom, including the ones for children. Heading into Space Mountain, 20 minute wait, which means we're probably just gonna keep walking right onto it. Again, it's like being in a wedding. Stop, walk, stop, walk, stop, walk. Ah, there was only a little bit of this outside and now we're back in the air conditioning. As I mentioned before, it's actually not that terrible out there today. Even though it's 90 degrees, we, last, we were here last August and I, I tell you, well, this is when they were having the hurricane. And we ended up having to leave early, but um, it was miserable. I was so miserable. I wasn't even enjoying myself. When we had to leave early, I wasn't even that sad about it because I was so hot and miserable the whole time. And even though it's hot out there, I am not miserable the whole time that we're here. There are definitely moments, to, like, you know, when we're standing out in the sun waiting to get in, but those are few and far between. Here we are getting ready to load up. Probably one group per car, or one party per car. There's three in each car, so they're probably doing like fronts and backs. Neato! Sorry I don't show you any video in there. Um, it's very herky-jerky and I feel like my phone would fly right out of my hands if I did. So I keep it very tightly in my pocket. That was the best ride of that that I've ever had. Usually I bump up against, I'm, I'm, like I said before, I'm tall. So I bump up against the uh, restraint. And like I said, it's herky-jerky so I'm bouncing everywhere. But honestly, I just kind of braced my legs and used them as a way to uh, and I didn't hold on to anything else because I didn't want to touch anything. 
that ended up being pretty good. Conversely, Josh said it was the worst he's done because he kept bouncing into the, the restraint and uh, did not have such a good time. We like Space Mountain better, Disneyland, for a couple of reasons. First of all, they're side-by-side -side cars rather than one in front of each other. I mean, you can put two people in a car rather than everybody being in a, a line. And the music is in the car with you. So it is designed to, you know, do certain musical beats when you do things on the track. Um, I feel like it's a more immersive and better and more comfortable experience than it is here. Having said that, this wasn't too bad today. We're getting on the Buzz Lightyear uh, ride. It's also a game and they're in the middle of cleaning procedures that you can see where they're spraying them all down with disinfectant and then they'll let them go for another round to make sure that they dry off before anybody gets into them. We do not mind waiting at all for some disinfectants uh, or some disinfecting of the rides. We'll have a meet and greet where uh, Stitch is up on the stage in Tomorrowland and you can just walk up next to him and get your picture taken. Josh got his picture taken. You'll see that at the end of the video. Stitch is so cool. And Josh was wearing a Stitch shirt today and Stitch reacted to that, which is super awesome. We're really bummed. I mean, if you've seen any of my videos, you know how much I love the People Mover, but it hasn't been running in anyone's vlogs that I've seen for the past week and not today either. And I get it. I mean, it doesn't, even on a busy day, it's not normally hard to get onto. So on a day like this, I feel like most cars would be running, uh, would be running empty. So rather than having to staff it, they're just not running it. That makes me sad, but I understand. It's just one of my favorite rides here. I like those kinds of just sit back and enjoy the ride kind of rides. Just another check-in. It's about 2.45 and this is as busy it is, er, as it is in the hub right now, which is unheard of. This hub would normally be not necessarily filled with people, but you know, there would be 20 times more people scattered about this hub, waiting in line to take pictures, blah, blah, blah. And this is what it looks like right now. I mentioned before that Josh and I are usually go, go, go. So sometimes we don't stop and smell the roses and we notice, uh oh, somebody's coming by. Uh, we don't notice little details like, look, there's a little Chippendale right there near the fountain. And there's a Br'er Rabbit over here. And across the way, there's a Goofy. And uh, over there is a Donald. Yeah, I like those little designs. Again, we've been here dozens of times. Well, more than a dozen times. And so we always catch new things. Eeyore and Piglet and Rabbit are all hanging out at the Crystal Palace, which is not open right now for food, but you can use it as a sort of meet and greet. Wonderful. That music you hear over there is Tinkerbell going by on a little float. Let's see if we can get a glimpse of her. We're heading back into Adventureland. We keep coming back here because I want to get my favorite dessert, which is orange vanilla twist. The orange is uh, by Dole, the same company that makes the Dole Whip, the pineapple. Uh, so it's orange and you can either get it by itself or you can get it mixed with vanilla and I love creamsicles. So that's what I'm getting. This is Josh's. He got the chocolate vanilla swirl and I got the orange vanilla swirl, and this is non-dairy, so neither of these actually have any milk in them, so if you're lactose intolerant, which I am sort of minorly, uh, this doesn't make it act up, but it's a nice cool snack on a warm day. A little bit of Disney magic. We have a, a popcorn bucket, looks like the Skyliner, and if you have a popcorn bucket, you can get uh, popcorn refills for two bucks rather than paying the full price for them. And when we went up to get our popcorn, we were talking to the person uh, who was serving it and they were kind of in the middle of a changeover where they were ordering some new um, 
popcorn buckets and just inventory stuff. So we had to wait a few seconds, a couple minutes actually. And uh, we were talking about my shirt, which I have a uh, Rapunzel shirt on. So we were talking about Rapunzel and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, when she served us the popcorn, she's like, that's on me. And so um, we didn't have to pay anything for our popcorn refill, which is super awesome. That's actually not the first time something like that has happened. I've gotten uh, pretzels for free before. Uh, and um, I'm trying to think, there was one other thing, I can't remember what it was, but this is the third time something like that has happened. And um, it really is just us being friendly. Like, I feel like there's so many per day that they're allowed to comp, which is kind of cool. But it's, like I said, it's Disney magic. I was expecting to pay my $2 and I didn't have to pay anything. And I know it's just $2, but it means a lot. I think we helped brighten that person's day. Another cavalcade. is Splash Mountain, something we don't ride all the time because we don't want to get super wet when we're in the parks. But I think each group is getting its own uh, log. And if we sit in the back, then we'll be back heavy and we won't get as wet. We will get a little wet, but we won't get as wet. Plus, we're wearing mostly moisture wicking stuff. I don't care as much about my clothes because they'll dry. I don't want my socks and shoes to get wet because then that's a pain to deal with. But I mean, if we get soaked, we'll just go back to the hotel. Not a big deal. But um, yeah, looking forward to it. We haven't ridden this in a while. Actually, at least two or three visits. So it'll be fun. It is 3.45 right now. It says the time on this is 50 minutes, 5-0. So we will time it to see how close it is, how close their estimate is. At least it's shady over here with all these trees and they have fans going in various places so there is some air movement happening. But it's kind of cool the way they've weaved everybody through these lines with the social distancing. It's a, this must have been one massive undertaking to kind of figure out the lines for everything. I applaud the engineers who came up with all of this. That had to be a Herculean task. Uh, just got off Splash Mountain and so it said it was going to be, I'm gonna say 60 minutes, 50 minutes? Now I don't remember what I said. In any case, it wasn't anything like that. We were on the ride, um, or boarding one of the logs at about 20 minutes after I recorded that. So it wasn't nearly as long as they said, but nothing has been. And that's really a nice surprise. We didn't get super soaked. And I'm sorry I didn't take any video of it. I used my phone to, uh, do these videos and I did not want to get my phone all wet just in case I got soaked. Just can't wait. Does it for us from the Magic Kingdom. We'll be back in a few days. We got everything done that we wanted to and we'll pick up some other stuff later on. We're heading to Disney Springs now for a little dinner. 